this is the rollout of the redone, the renewed, if that's such a word, the re renewal of the downtown neighborhood. And really appreciate you coming out, learning more. And there's so much more to do. There's so much more to make this downtown a special neighborhood. And we're here tonight to, to get your input, your thoughts on how we can keep that being a special, how we can keep our momentum in making downtown Redmond such a special neighborhood. So what makes a great city? You know, is it, is it the sidewalks? Is it the streets? Is it the people? Um, it's a little of everything that makes a great city. It includes business climate, recreation, gathering spaces, quality of transportation, choices of restaurants. And the way I look at it is we're not going to pick what's the great thing in Redmond. We're going to create an environment that gives you choices. And we want you to have the choices of housing in all of the city of Redmond. There's, there's a greater variety of housing. Um, choices in transportation. Do you drive? Do you walk? Do you take the bus? Do you take a combination of them? Um, the choices then give you the freedom to do what you need. As you go through life, you find that you'll make different choices. So for instance, uh, my wife and I bought a house on Education Hill. We raised two kids. Uh, one's out of college and one's still in college. We're uh, empty nesters. Well, we're starting to look about downsizing. downsizing. Uh, my wife wants to get a one-bedroom condo as soon as possible so they can't come back. But <laughs> there's choices. Um, there's choices um, for us to make. And it's all about that. Redmond's been recognized for the changes it's gone through the last 10 years. We were named one of the best five places to live in America by Money Magazine. Best place to bike. Best place to raise kids happiest young professionals, best communities for young people, and then our walking score of 95 plus out of 100 in our downtown area is one of the best in a suburban area. So how we, we plan for our growth provides challenges and opportunities. And taking the time now to figure out where we wanna go and have a firm idea of our vision will allow us to make the most of our opportunities. So tonight we're gonna to talk about creating those choices and then connecting the community so we become a strong social fabric. Imagine in 20 years, let's say uh, you work at uh, Aerojet out on Willows Road. You, you ride your bike downtown by using the Burlington Northern Trail, which is now called the Redmond Central Connector. You get off behind Red 160 um, because that's where your home is and you, you went home for lunch. But you decided that uh, it's a nice day and you're going to have a piece of pizza outside instead. Uh, you meet a friend um, for coffee. Uh, you look at the street in Cleveland and you notice, uh, because you zapped it forward in time, the traffic is two ways. Redmond Way is two ways. Cleveland Street has become like the old-fashioned Main Street where there's plenty of foot traffic, shopping, and it's a gathering space. Redmond Way is still very walkable, but it has a little more traffic on it than Cleveland Street. Cleveland Street will have the parking and a slower pace. Uh, imagine that then you go from the Redmond Central Connector to the downtown park. Right now it's three quarters of an acre. It'll be over two acres when we're done with it here in the next couple of years. Um, maybe you have a meeting in Seattle, so you get on the light rail station and you take light rail into Seattle, or you go to the Mariners game that night, um, who will have their first winning season in 20 years, <laughs> and which is why you want to go. But then you can take light rail back and take the elevator up in your place at Redmond 160 or somewhere along the Cleveland Way. But imagining what we want our city to be and how we want to function within that city is a great way of imagining how to make a da great downtown. And then the other phrase I keep in mind is every great city has a park in the middle. And having this downtown park I think is key because 
it doesn't make it a, a forest of buildings. It doesn't tower over our um, old town center. I didn't want four six-story buildings over our old town. So putting the park there creates a nice smooth transition from Matador and um, El Toreador and so forth into the park, which then has the housing around it. So tonight we want you to think about what's Redmond going to be like in 2030. And I've provided some images, but we need to get a little more specific. We're planning to be an urban community. There's going to be over 2,200 uh, residential units in the downtown. There'll be over $330 million of private investment building out this vision that we've just talked about. And this includes 200 plus affordable housing units. So we're going to have, again, cho choices in housing so that different price points can be met. So you don't have all of one income in the, in the market, but you have a variety of incomes living in downtown. And we, of course, want to stay true to our values of being a environmentally friendly, respecting nature, and blending in with our environment. So private development. Some of this development, this, the planning for this went on um, 10 or more years ago. I think 97, 99 was a lot of the plans. But getting the plans to be real um, is something that we've worked on the last five years. We had plans for having four to six story buildings in downtown, but we had one story infrastructure. We had one story water pipes and one story stormwater pipes. And when you develop, you have to put in the right infrastructure. So the sewer hookup is over by Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I realized that development was going to follow the sewer line. And we really wanted development to come into downtown. So over the last four years, we've increased our water capacity, increased our stormwater capacity, and, and have the infrastructure so development can occur along Cleveland instead of along the sewer line. So it's built for people, not built for infrastructure. So we have Veloci, which is next to the um, Redmond Transit Center, which has over 300 units and 11,000 square feet of commercial space on the ground floor. It has won many awards for outstanding design. We have Red 160. It has 250 mixed, um, 250 units with mixed use development. It won the 2011 Pillars Award for Best Mid-Rise Apartment Community. And it's also the home of Zeke's Pizza, Rudy's Barbershop, and if you didn't know, Top Pot Donuts. I get more comments from other mayors about how did you get that Top Pot Donut? Yeah, you think there's so much more about Redmond than Top Pot Donuts. Um, we have the have River Park where there's a number of units, but there's also Group Health. It's right next to Luke McRedmond Park. There's the Hyatt Hotel, Hyatt House Hotel with 120 uh, rooms there, and 108,000 square feet of commercial and resident commercial and retail. But again, we're creating housing choices. And then today, if you went outside, there's a crane across the street and there's a crane down in Cleveland. Across the street, um, they're calling it the 85th Street Apartments. And you can see that it's going up here. And then over behind the Matador is the Center Point project, which um, is going to add housing and, resident, or housing and uh, retail space to our community. Now, one thing about those buildings along Cleveland is we've zoned it now, so you have to build two fronts. One front faces Cleveland Street, and the other one faces the Redmond Central Connector. So when you're walking on the Redmond Central Connector, you might see a coffee shop or a restaurant or a bookstore that you're going to want to stop at instead of seeing the back of a building. And so as the Redmond Central Connector gathers steam here in the next few years, you're going to see a dynamic place to walk on both sides of the buildings. Downtown Park. We put out, I want to say it was like 56 pieces of furniture of red tables and chairs. We didn't chain them down, and we didn't collect them at night. and We haven't lost a piece yet. I was in Bellevue the other day with a Bellevue City Council member, and we went to sit 
outside and the chair was chained to the table. And I told them, well, we don't do that in Redmond. <laughs> um, it made me wonder what really does go on in Bellevue. But we're trying to activate, trying to, you know, as this new neighborhood develops, we are bringing in art, we're bringing in performances. We had uh, Lucia Niari's three performances that had 1,200 people in the downtown, averaging 300 to 600 per performance. We've had Sunday in the Park performances that have drawn great crowds. Um, and in 2013, next year, we're going to start some interim improvements, but we want to work with the whole community on designing what that downtown park is going to be. Tonight, start some of that. So with the future downtown park, uh, we will again enhance the infrastructure. Uh, one housing developer said to me, if the city's going to invest in itself, then we know that's the best place for us to invest too. Um, or as mayors keep score, how many cranes do you have in your city? To have any cranes right now in this economic climate is remarkable. To have two, and we're gonna have a third one here in the next 30 days, um, shows that people wanna come to Redmond, people wanna live in Redmond, and, and the demand is high to live in this quality community. So then, whether you're watching this on TV or you're here in the audience with me, we have our website, redmond.gov slash community. And here the website has icons where you can click on and see what's going on in the city. Um, you'll see lists of projects. Um, so we're clicking on the downtown park right here. And then you'll see details on the downtown park. So A here is the downtown park. Then you get the downtown park page. And then we have a video link at the bottom. But this is, this is another way of us interacting and reaching out and trying to gather feedback. So we want to be as transparent and opening and provide as many avenues to have the dialogue with the community. In the next five years, we're going to do a, a master plan for the downtown park. We're going to see how much money we have to implement what part of that. We're going to complete the street grid in the downtown, 164th, the Redmond Woodenville Road is going through. That should be open in November at the latest, I think, with the weather holding. Um, having those north-south connections then lets us start on Cleveland and preparing Cleveland to be converted to two-way streets. So it's getting the sidewalks ready, getting the bulbs and the parking ready and so forth. Then we'll work on Redmond Way to get that ready. And then hopefully in about five years, 2016-ish, we'll be able to make our one-way streets become two-way streets. We're trying to improve circulation. We're trying to improve mobility. We're trying to make it much more usable for walkers, bikers, transit users. Again, giving you those choices. That's just the next five years. To be a progressive community, we got to think 20 years in the future. We need to be thinking, what do we want to be at 2030 so we can keep this high quality up? And that's where we need your help tonight. And, um, we have then a whole variety of nice materials that we can bring together to create a really cool kind of plaza space for the streetscape. Yeah, I live in Cleveland, which is like right here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, right here. Yeah. Have you been seeing some of our performances? Yeah, have you enjoyed awesome. them? Oh, yeah. yeah. Good. Great. We have a great spot. I mean, I couldn't envision just going there and talking at one of those tables. I think that I would rather like sit down and kind of. I'm kind of thinking like Westlake Center. You have the town of Sonoma, which has lots of trees and stuff like that. It's very it's impressive. Here we're we're gonna really looking forward to this, right. this year. And, and this one all, yeah. you know. Right, they bought the River Park for $95 million. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, well, you know a lot. So, well, I lived here for 10 years. Like, these buildings here are the ones that are kind of eyesores, and the, you know, there's one here that's coming down. You can rate this and protect it while still making it accessible to everybody else. Um, these these rails and ties are being removed. Yeah. Um, but they won't... You say that, I won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs>